Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here, with a quick unscripted video for you all. I've just come back from watching the new Predator movie, The Predator, which was just staggeringly awful to the point of comedy. But one thing it did prompt me to think about is something that comes up all the time when I'm talking about spacecraft design in science fiction, and that's that alien ship designs are nine times out of ten not very good. And I, I don't know whether this is just me, uh or if I'm going against the flow here. But I feel like uh, human designs, or ships designed to be futuristic projections of humans, or human allegories, or whatever, are generally pretty solid and, and sort of utilitarian and unique. Alien ship designs are sometimes done right. Star Trek uh, does a great job with alien ship designs. Everybody has their own unique... Uh, style. Stargate does a, a, a good job, less so than Star Trek, but still kind of there. And uh, if you watch my old, uh, I did a podcast forever ago on the Aurora class, uh, Lantian ship from Stargate, and I talked about how that, despite being an ancient, unknowable alien race, just looks like a solid, sensible design, and doesn't fall into the trap that I'm going to talk about here, of making alien ships look alien for the sake of alienness, if you know what I mean. There's a good chance whenever you need an alien ship design for a science fiction film or TV show or game or anything, that it will be this aquatic, kind of weird, sprawling, biological mess that looks really garish and complicated and over the top because somebody in an art department was told that it needed to be alien. And that's like, it's, it's kind of sad, really, that, that, that it's that low bar and unimaginative. And unfortunately, I hate to say it because I love it to bits, but Babylon 5 is really, really guilty of this. The uh, alien ship designs in B5 are all like this, just masses of coral-looking kind of biological stuff. And that's great if it's going to be like the maybe the defining style of one race, I guess. But even still, you have to think about how vehicles in, a, in the vacuum of space work and how they will be designed to adapt to that environment. But making everything that is not human a giant, bulbous, colourful mess is not hugely interesting to my mind. One exception I'll give for B5 is the... Uh, the Narn ships, like the Jaquan class. The Jaquan class looks like it could conceivably have been built by humans. And I think any alien ship needs to look like it could conceivably have been built by humans, just different humans. Because these are all vehicles designed to explore and operate in the same location, in the same kind of environment, and do largely the same things. A ship isn't going to look like a giant octopus unless it has a very good reason to look like a giant octopus. But most of the examples aren't even that visually interesting. Normally, it's just a simple case of the human ships need to be angular and grounded and sensible, so by extension, we must make the alien ships curved and sloping and colourful and strange in order to offset them from our established thing. There's a million different ways you can make aliens look drastically different and identifiable compared to humans without resorting to the simple, oh, they're green and all their ships are bulbous and curved. Like, the uh, one of the most egregious examples, I think, is the Ket from Mass Effect Andromeda, like, Mass Effect held itself to such a high standard before then, and then Andromeda comes along with these rusty, green, bulbous ships, and it's just the epitome of boring design. And, I mean, frankly, the Ket as a race overall were just completely standard fare, uninteresting, bad guy aliens. Which is a terrible shame for my favourite IP, and something that has held itself to a much higher standard in the past. I feel like even after decades of space opera, we're still getting new innovative ideas for human-style ship designs. Artists are still throwing out really unique, interesting new future human warships, etc. But alien ship design has fallen into this kind of wayside thing where there's like clearly identifiable styles, like you've got your big cathedral ship aliens and you've got your big flying fish ships and you've got your sort of sprawling hive mind ships this extends itself to alien species in general i think there's a, a general overarching lack of imagination when approaching aliens in sci-fi there's a really good chance that you'll fall into the it's a bunch of space elves it's a big uh, space parasite virus thing it's a bunch of unknowable existential shadow creatures like the reapers or the shadows or the whatever we've even got like five or six different space mercantile conmen races now, like the Ferengi and the Bentuzi and the Taladi. I get that writing aliens is not easy, and it's why a lot of the best science fiction doesn't have them in it. But surely we haven't run dry the well of imagination for coming up with alien races. I'll wrap this up, though, by giving one example that I really, really approve of. Actually, one of my all-time favourite ship designs is an alien design, and that is the Kumari-class Andorian battlecruiser from Star Trek. Now, this completely fulfills the angle I'm trying to shoot for here. You could easily imagine 
imagine that some different sect of humans could have built this thing because it still has the grounded, sensible design. It looks like a vehicle built to operate and fight wars in space. It's sleek and stylized and cool and identifiable and you can immediately associate it with the Andorians. It's got a great visual aesthetic to it, but it's not covered in fins or strange protrusions or anything like that. It doesn't have tendrils all over it. It's not got big angry spiky bits to indicate that it's from some kind of warrior race. It's painted in sensible military colors. Overall, it's just a really good looking ship, I think. And as I said, Star Trek generally does a good job with alien ship designs. All the Romulan ships and Klingon ships and such are are great aesthetics for their own races. Unfortunately, they've kind of set the standard for other people to rip off later on. For example, every two-bit science fiction story in the last 20 years has some kind of Klingon-esque race with big spiky red ships. None of them realize that the Klingons themselves actually didn't have that egregious of ship designs in that kind of way. Klingon ships still look aggressive and sinister, but they're not covered in superfluous spiky bits and things like that to make them look more angry than sensible. But I think the Andorian battlecruiser is kind of the gold standard for what we should be after here. It makes sense, it's logical, it's grounded, it's still clearly identifiable as not being a human ship, and you can more easily imagine that every major part of it has an explainable purpose and isn't just a tacked-on bit of aesthetic. Let me know what you think, though. I imagine there's a lot of people who majorly disagree with me here, because uh, this is mostly just a design taste thing for me. I'm certainly not saying that you're wrong to like any of the Babylon 5 alien ship designs, etc., but I do wonder how many people agree with me here that, generally speaking, a large percentage of alien ship design is rather lacking in imagination in the sci-fi genre. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.